Madam President, I, I come to the floor to talk about what is the pending business before the floor, which is my legislation to end big uh, oil subsidies uh, in this country. Uh, you know, Madam President, middle class families are hurting, struggling to make ends meet, and yet today we're here on the floor of the United States Senate fighting an uphill battle against those on the other side of the aisle who with one hand would continue handing out $24 billion in wasteful subsidies to five of the biggest, most profitable oil companies in the country, and with the other hand, take away vital programs from our nation's veterans, its seniors, disabled children, just to name a few. We hear our Republican friends talk about balanced budgets, and we hear them talk about austerity. We hear them saying we all have to tighten our belts. We all have to make hard choices on Medicare and veterans and veterans' benefits and student loans, just uh, to name a few. And yet, they will not, in that austerity or shared fat sacrifice, say that we will end unnecessary tax breaks to big oil. They'll continue to ask the same thing they've asked a thousand times before, which is that the American taxpayer subsidize the richest five companies in the world while we cut programs for our wounded soldiers, for our seniors, and for our students. We think of budgets, uh, some people think of budgets just as boring documents with lots of bewildering numbers. In reality, uh, they are statements uh, about our priorities. And this debate today draws the brightest of lines between our priorities and theirs. The Romney-Ryan budget, for example, cuts $2.2 billion in education for children with disabilities. And what do they say to these parents? I guess they justify it by saying we just can't afford it. So why is it that we cannot afford it when five companies that collectively made $137 billion dollars in profits just last year alone are getting $24 billion in subsidies over the next 10 years. So you tell these children on the, the Romney-Ryan budget they cannot be helped to fulfill their God-given potential because we just can't afford it, but we can afford to give these five companies who made $137 billion in profits, not proceeds, profits, that we should give them an additional $24 billion of our taxpayers' money? I don't think so, Madam President. Here's another example. Republicans are proposing cutting $13 billion per year from the SNAP program. That's formally called the food stamp program for families who do not know where their next meal will come from. So laid off workers may not be able to feed their families, but our Republican colleagues will ensure that big oil companies continue to stuff their face at the taxpayer trough. And they make sure no subsidies are cut that will hurt the bonuses of the big five oil company CEOs. Here's one of them, Rex Tillerson, the CEO of ExxonMobil. He made nearly $29 million in just 2010. How is it that we can afford to protect Mr. Tillerson's pay, but not a program designed to help hungry children? Why is it that we need to protect those who need it the least, but take it from those who need it the most? Another issue we keep hearing from the other side is that cutting these subsidies will somehow raise gas prices. The notion that gas prices will go up, I mean, this is only in Washington. 
only in Washington. Anybody, any place else in this country, uh, I'll tell you, they, they get it. But only in Washington, uh, hearing from the other side that cutting subsidies will somehow raise gas prices. The notion that gas prices will go up if we end subsidies to big oil is nothing more than Republican snake oil. And the American people aren't buying it. Let me put it plainly. By subsidizing, we are subsidizing these companies to the tune of over $2 billion per year. Collectively, just these five companies, not talking about other size producers, just these five companies, they made $137 billion last year. Can anybody here with a straight face tell the American people that if they could only live with $135 billion in profits, that they would give up their $2 billion and therefore uh, if they could only live with $135 billion, they wouldn't need to raise gas prices a dime unless they are so greedy that $135 billion is not enough in profits that they need out of each and every taxpayer's pocket in this country another $2 billion to add to their profits. Now, Yesterday morning, I heard one of my colleagues on the floor ask, why are we picking on the poor oil companies when everyone gets the same tax deductions? So, Madam President, I took out my 1040 tax form to look for myself, and I was looking. I said, let's see, intangible drilling costs. Nope, I don't see it in my 1040 form. Tertiary injection, injectants. I don't see it on my 1040 form. So I guess not everyone gets the special tax deductions for drilling. Now, there is a tax deduction that big oil gets called domestic manufacturing deduction. When Congress was contemplating that provision, big oil, through their legion of lobbyists, managed to convince many on the other side of the aisle that drilling for oil was somehow manufacturing. You know, when we think of manufacturing, we think about creating a product. Creating a product. I don't know about you, but being able to call drilling for oil manufacturing seems like a real special tax break to me. So, Madam President, as I said yesterday in this chamber, it's time to get back to reality the type of reality that middle-class families face in this country, the type of reality that middle-class families face as they go to the pump, as they have to get to work, take their children to school, to doctor's appointments, the type of reality small businesses face when they're trying to send their sales force uh, across a state and have them traveling in a car to do so. It's time to tell middle-class families struggling to make ends meet uh, that fairness means everyone, everyone, pays their fair share when it comes to reducing the deficit. And that it also means it's time to stop wasting taxpayer monies on oil subsidies and use this money to invest in clean energy, in jobs, in lowering the deficit. It's time for us to repeal the big oil tax breaks. It's time, Madam President, for our colleagues on the other side to join us to end this corporate welfare for big oil companies, to create competition to help lower gas prices, and to reduce the deficit rather than continue to sell snake oil to the American people to protect big oil profits. I, I uh, have listened to some of the debate. I, I, just, I just don't get it. Uh, I've seen uh, average Americans uh, who are struggling and they say, oh, wait a minute, $24 billion of our money is going to the big five oil companies and they're making $137 billion. As a matter of fact, that's just one year. The $24 billion that we want to eliminate and put into uh, renewable energy fuels that will create the competition that will ultimately help drive down gas prices, to reduce the deficit, 
significantly instead of calling upon cuts to children, whether in their nutrition or cuts to children who are disabled. You know, during that same period of time, I only talked about $137 billion in one year. We want to cut $24 billion over the course of 10 years. Guess what they'll make in 10 years? Over a trillion dollars in profits. I find it hard to fall for the crocodile tears that taking $24 billion over 10 years, a little over $2 billion a year, when they're going to make a trillion dollars over a decade is somehow not enough, that that leaves them with not enough profits, 24 billion from 1 trillion, and that because we take those 24 billion, gas prices are gonna go up. Well, all of these subsidies haven't made gas prices go down. And as a matter of fact, as I pointed out yesterday, at a time that they were making $137 billion in profits, they were producing 4% less oil. So come on, it's time to give working families in this country a break. We can do that as we vote to end big oil subsidies. With that, Madam President, I yield the floor and observe the absence of a quorum.